In 1918, in the 11th month, on the 11th hour of the 11th day, the First World War came to an end and is now known as Remembrance Day. It is the day we remember the brave men and women who have served and continue to serve our country during times of war, conflict and peace, specifically the men who served in the First World War. The money raised from Poppy Scotland's donations are used to help service men and women who are still alive, whose lives have been changed by the wars that they fought in. The money helps veterans who may need jobs, somewhere to live, or just with any other support that they need. We have a two minute silence at 11am to commemorate those who gave up their lives for our freedom. We sacrificed nothing for our freedom. It was given to us by those who came before us and sacrificed so much. It is our responsibility to never forget the service and the sacrifices of more than 1.4 million British soldiers from World War I and World War II. 299 of which were Brecon's sons, but also for the many men who lost their lives during more recent wars, such as Iraq and Afghanistan. This year, we have chosen the theme of the 1918 Spanish influenza as it links to today's current pandemic. Remembrance is about a wide range of people who were directly or indirectly victims of war. 50 million people lost their lives during the pandemic, which killed more people than the war itself. I loved army life. It was my whole dream and serving my queen and country was what I wanted to do. I first saw action in um, 1999. It uh, was nothing like I'd ever expected. We started to be around death quite a lot. Um, near the end of the, the operational tour, there was a, a commotion about 100 metres in front of us. Um, and uh, a boy who was about 13 years old was playing football completely innocently and had stepped on a landmine. His body was just in pieces. I was only 19 and I just didn't really know what to do with it. There was no training for that. You're just a, a person and that kid had nothing to do with it. I left the army um, in 2005. It was the 26th of October. Um, it was a difficult time. It was uh, not what I expected. Um, financially, we were in dire straits. And I had no money management skills. I never had to worry about paying bills, really. I was a, a soldier. They weren't my concerns, really. And things got really, really out of control. I developed what's called PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, which I believe were linked to some of the things I'd witnessed as a young guy. I didn't know how to talk about it. I didn't know how to express the emotional trauma that I'd been part of, and that came out in all the wrong ways. It came out with stress, anger, fear. I was being a, a terrible husband. I really, really needed help, and I didn't know where to go. We were with a private landlord, uh, we were evicted from there. The council gave us temporary accommodation and with it being temporary accommodation, there just wasn't the house available for us. There was nothing available and we were threatened with homelessness again. My pride was getting in the way of trying to look for help and so my, my amazing wife, she jumped in and helped me and she phoned Poppy Scotland on my behalf. Um, I don't know what we would have done if Lindsay hadn't phoned. They were very quick in getting in touch with us again. Uh, the lines of communication were always open. We were always on the phone, talking, making sure we were okay. And they explained clearly how they could help and that they wanted to help. They arranged financial help very quickly I mean, it was over a thousand pound, which was massive to us. It was really, really a big help. It's given us a chance to to get back on track. Um, I've actually completed a course now, and I'm going offshore, and I've got a job lined up. Things are looking good. Poppy Scotland helped me personally, but because of that, they helped my wife, they helped my children, they helped my 
my future, they helped my prospects, they helped finances, they helped me get my confidence back, they allowed me to remember who I was and what I was about. The 1918 flu epidemic, also known as the Great Flu Epidemic, or the Spanish Flu, is considered to have been the worst global pandemic in history, as it concentrated a high mortality rate in a short period of time. It is estimated that the mortality rate of the pandemic was between 10 and 20 percent, that it killed between 50 and 100 million people worldwide. The number of deaths in Great Britain was estimated at around 228,000. Unlike other flu epidemics that primarily affect children and the elderly, many of its victims were healthy young people and adults in their 20s and 40s, as well as animals such as cats and dogs. When the flu began to spread at the end of World War I, the media in the countries that were involved in the war censored news of the pandemic, afraid that it would undermine the war effort. Spain, however, was a neutral country and its newspapers reported on the new disease using names such as the fever of three days, the soldier of Naples, or the fashionable disease. To the outside world, where news of the disease was suppressed, it seemed that Spain was the only country affected. This is why the disease became known all over the world as the Spanish flu. Although it was known as Spanish flu, the outbreak is actually believed to have started in March of 1918 with a young man called Gilbert Mitchell, an army cook in Kansas, USA. Mitchell entered the camp infirmary on the morning of 4th March 1918 with a fever and headache. A few hours later, there were more than 100 patients undergoing treatment. Demand for treatment became so great that they had to set up an aircraft hangar to care for all the patients. As can be seen in the graph, most fatalities fell in just 13 weeks from September to mid-December 1918 in what is known as the second wave. The media in the United States and Europe began to promote the wearing of face masks and regular hand washing as the most effective ways of containing the spread of the virus. As the world struggles today to cope with the current COVID-19 pandemic, these basic hygiene precautions remain the most effective way to prevent infections. Also echoing the self-isolation recommended to stop the spread of COVID, the 1918 patients who showed no symptoms were isolated for 14 days. Just as today, doctors in 1918 recognised the danger posed by these asymptomatic patients in the spread of the disease. Just as today, the wearing of face coverings was seen as an essential measure to reduce the spread of the highly contagious disease. Cloth masks became mandatory for all those performing public service work during the Spanish flu epidemic and was strongly recommended for the rest of the population to prevent the disease from spreading so easily. The more contact there was between people, the more likely they were to spread the virus. The third and last wave in 1918 was more benign as many people were already immunized, bringing the pandemic under control by the spring of 1919. By the summer of 1920, the virus had disappeared. Our theme for remembrance this year has been the impact of global pandemics, with a particular focus on the so-called Spanish influenza of 1918. Not only are there lessons to be learned from history, but the numbers of people who died as a result of the virus was much greater in 1918 than the numbers who have died even in the Great War itself. The two events, however, are closely linked. The arrival of a pandemic in Europe from the USA at a time when millions of soldiers from around the globe arrived in the war zones, in addition to food shortages, disease and war weariness, were already weakening the population and it allowed the virus to spread very, very quickly. It was the perfect storm.
Those heroes who shed their blood and lost their lives are now lying in the soil of a friendly country. Therefore, rest in peace. There is no difference between the Johnnies and the Mehmets to us where they lie side by side in this country of ours. You, the mother who sent their sons from faraway countries, wipe away your tears. Your sons are now lying in our bosom and are in peace. After having lost their wives on this land, they become our sons as well. Suicide in the Trenches I knew a simple soldier boy who grinned at life in empty joy, slept suddenly through the lonesome dark and whistled early with the lark. In winter trenches, cowed and glum, with crumps and lice and lack of rum, he put a bullet through his brain, no one spoke of him again. You smug-faced crowds with kindling eye, who cheer when soldier lads march by, sneak home and pray you'll never know the hell where youth and laughter go. In Flanders Field the poppies blow, between the crosses row and row, that mark our place and in the sky the larks so bravely singing fly. Scarce heard amid the guns below, we are the dead short days ago. We lived, felt dawn, saw sunset glow, loved and were loved, and now we lie in Flanders Fields. Take up our quarrel with the foe, to you from failing hands we throw. The torch be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with those who die. We shall not sleep so poppies grow in Flanders Fields. Women Demobilised, July 1919. Now must we go again back to the world, full of grey ghosts and voices of men dying, and in the rain the sounding of last posts and lovers crying. Back to the old, back to the empty world. Now are put by the bugles and the drums, and the worn spurs and the great swords they carried. Now are we made most lonely, proudly theirs, the men we married. Under the dome, the long roll of the drums. Now are the fallen happy and sleep sound. Now in the end, to us has come the paying. These who return will find the love they spend, but we are praying. Love of our lovers, fallen who sleep sound. Now in our hearts abides always our war. Time brings to us no day for our forgetting. Never for us is folded war away, dawn or sunsetting. Now in our hearts abides always our war. Remember me. Duty called and I went to war. Though I'd never fired a gun before. I paid the price for you in a day as all my dreams were blown away. Remember me. We all stood true as whistles blew and faced the shell and stench of hell. Now battle's done, there is no sound. Our bones decay beneath the ground. We cannot see or smell or hear. There is no hope or fear. Remember me. Once, like, once we, like you, would laugh and talk and run and walk and do the things that you all do. But now we lie in rows so neat, beneath the soil, beneath your feet. Remember me, in mud and gore and the blood of war, we fought and fell and moved no more. Remember me, I am not dead, I'm just a voice within your head. I shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them.